everyone I just wanted to give you guys a brief overview of the car in the daylight um, so here we have our 1984 Ford LTD Grand Victoria under the hood here we have the engine bay it is uh, hopefully complete there's my new power cable that I put on that red one um, there are a lot of wires and vacuum tubes here let's get this uh, little intake off Here's that throttle body fuel injector I was telling you about. Uh, I'm not sure what most of that is, but uh, we're gonna we're gonna see what we can do with that because uh, not sure how to replace that. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna do what we can. Let's check on the uh, throttle here. That does turn the little plates inside, so I think that's that's a good thing. some power washing under the car to clean it out, all the rust so we don't have to lay in that today. Uh, Dad's uh, assisting with that, so thank you, Dad. Okay. Yeah. Let me hit it with this and let's go get something to eat. All right. A minute. Let it eat away at it. Well, you can hit a little bit harder than that. There you go. Dear Derek, <laughs> tell me what I'm doing right. <laughs> you got to watch your language now. This is a G-rated film. I don't curse. I know that, but... Uh, I don't think anyone's ever heard me cursing the history of the world. I heard you say, oh, Shaw, a while ago, so that's cut that out. Shucks. So... I think whoever put this in used some of that room temperature vulcanization cream to lock it in place. I'm trying to cut it out with an exacto knife. But that's not how uh, okay. Never mind. I'm also not sure how successful that's going to be. This thing is filthy. Ooh. All right, so I was able to finally kind of get this thing out by just prying it up with the, uh, the pliers here. Or needle nose. And yeah, it fits in there really easy. All right, so here we have our uh, floaty thing. I think that's the technical term for it. Um, it's uh, pretty gross, but uh, it was still working, so hopefully it still is. Uh, now we have all the equipment we need to kind of move it to the new tank, so we'll get started on that, I guess. Don't turn it over you. There's so much of this <clears throat> plasticky stuff. I don't even know how to get that off. If I had one of them uh, fancy whirly ones. That's, that's going to take some scraping. Okay. 
I got updates. All right, so cleaned up uh, the floater or the sending unit. Um, it looks uh, silvery now for the most part. That took about 15 minutes. Um, that thing moves, so uh, I'm gonna say that's gonna be ready to put in. And then we have the pump itself. Uh, I had ordered a new one of these, but uh, they called me today, the day of delivery, and said it was out of stock, so I'm going to try and uh, refurbish this one as best I can. Uh, it was working. Uh, the sock is really dirty, though. Um, I'm not quite sure how to clean that, so I'm probably just going to uh, spray it with a bunch of brake fluid cleaner and uh, then try and scratch off all of this rust and uh, see if that works. I'll, uh, I'll let you know how it goes. All right. Uh, been working on cleaning off the uh, uh, fuel pump and the sending unit, which is a little float thing. We've been making some good progress with that. They're getting cleaner. Um, we are going to have to take a break to go to the store to buy some more brake cleaner um, just to make sure that we can get them really clean because we can't really replace that sock. Um, so we're going to head out there and we'll be right back. Okay, here's where we're at right now. Uh, the new tank is right here. Uh, the fuel uh, sensor, sending unit I think they call it, uh, is installed with uh, some new Bracketry. Um, I was not, actually sorry, no, the new one didn't come, so I had to uh, use the old one, but I did have new Bracketry. It's in there pretty good, um, and this is uh, the thing that connects into that. Um, so I feel pretty good with that part. Also, of note, the fuel pump, uh, which is on the other side of this, uh, was not uh, in stock. Even though they said it was going to be delivered today, that's fine. So I don't have uh, a new one in there, but I'm using the old one. I cleaned it out really well with uh, brake fluid, <clears throat> so we're going to go with that. Um, the filler neck rubber grommet thing that's over here somewhere. Uh, we got that in. Um, and we're working with that. Um, the tank straps, uh, I got these kind of bolts um, for them because that's what one of them that was in there looked like. I've never seen these before or used these, so. I think I'm doing it the right way because it comes with a, hang on, hold on, hold on, Ugh. it comes with a, uh, um, a this thing, uh, and basically what you can do is screw it on there, and that'll screw up to uh, the, the this part and then it'll start twisting the whole bolt. So I think that's what you are supposed to do. Um, I am kind of guessing here, but we're gonna try that. Um, as for me, uh, this is a pretty miserable job. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, uh, kind of laying in the dirt and the rust and the bugs, and uh, I got a lot of it in my, in my eye, so I'm wearing uh, eye protection now. Um, and uh, it's just at a really uncomfortable angle and very difficult to do anything. So uh, it's rather stressful um, to kind of get the tank up. If we had a lift or something, I think that would make it much better. But unfortunately, we don't, but that's okay. So uh, the big problem I'm having right now, though, is that uh, I getting rust in my hair uh, is that I don't remember um, which uh, 
hoses go to what and they don't reach so I should have marked that uh, that's my fault but uh, I'm just trying to find hoses that'll reach to to whatever they have because we're real close to getting this in but I'm really stuck because I don't know where things go because I know there's a sending hose uh, a return hose and uh, like an evap hose so we're gonna work on that and I will let you know how that goes one more thing um, I did uh, order some new straps for the uh, for the tank uh, these are the old ones um, because the new ones had uh, a different thing and it wouldn't uh, wouldn't fit here um, so that was kind of disappointing I don't know if you can see that or not it wouldn't fit here um, so what I did was I got a uh, uh, as Derek calls him a, whir a whirly woo um, and uh, cleaned, cleaned the rust off of this as best I could and then I sprayed it with uh, um, rust-oleum uh, something that uh, turns it black and is supposed to protect it against the rust so hopefully these straps will keep lasting they seem like they're they're pretty good um, as you can see like there's just a ton of rust and I I don't really know how I can get rid of that like I I pressure washed under here twice already and degreaser um, but uh, but it's all still there like just just everywhere is just just filthy and uh, I don't really know kind of where to go on that um, but yeah as I said uh, I'm gonna keep working on the tank uh, and try and get it um, try and get it in um, and hopefully uh, soon I'll be able to uh, to have that in and report back to you okay so still working on the fuel tank um, you know that's fine uh, right now uh, where we're at is um, I got the new fuel tank is in like I got it held up by one of the straps uh, I think this hose goes on to here uh, the end of this thing was a little bit the end of this thing uh, had a little bit of flare to it um, so I don't know that might go there I got a 50 50 chance because uh, from the fuel sending unit that's uh, on the uh, trunk side of the uh, gas tank um, there are two lines that come out of that and the line on the uh, uh, driver's side should go to the hose over there leaving the other hose the one on closer to the passenger side coming over here which is uh, this hose right here I don't know if you can see it unfortunately this hose is about six inches too short now to reach so I uh, I'm not sure why that's happening um, oh hello little fella I don't know what you are that's disgusting okay um, so I have got to figure out how to because I think this one is the one that is the fuel sending so this should be spurting out fuel if everything's working meaning this line also should have a break in it somewhere which I mean like uh, I, I find a hard time believing that I mean these lines are in pristine condition but you know maybe they do okay so maybe if I drop the tank again and uh, try and get more line this way I'll have enough to reach here because if we can do that then I can put the tank up plug it in because uh, with the electricity 
uh, and I've got some gas. I could put it in and we could try it again and just pray to whatever God you believe in that it works. So I'm going to give that a shot now. Um, I learned a good lesson and I hope you all did too. Mark where you get things from because if I had like known that this hose goes to this or this, um, it would have saved me a lot of heartache. Um, and uh, I don't have the knowledge uh, of just knowing that without marking it. So if you do have that knowledge, you don't need to, I guess. But for me, that would have been uh, that would have been a wise use of uh, three or four minutes of my time. So yeah, um, we'll come back to you later, I suppose. I don't know if you guys should see this or want to see it but well, you know one of the things I have been proud about myself is uh, today I haven't cursed that much while working on a car which is good because it's it's been a stressful one because I uh, had wanted to have new components that were supposed to be delivered but they weren't and they were out of stock, so they never will be. Um, at least in time for this project. And that was kind of aggravating. But, you know, you just have to kind of deal with the challenges as they come up. And um, goggles, very good idea. You have to just kind of deal with the challenges as they come up. And, uh, stay positive because uh it can get it really can get to you um but you know i'm having fun getting to work with dad uh clearly an expert in uh the use of tools but again stay positive that bolt that, the bolt here come with me the bolt seems like it's in there pretty well uh you need a light that uh that bolt is pretty well in there i'm uh, hoping that it'll hold the gas tank but uh you know, I guess we'll have to see. Get you a little bit of skew. Oh, God. Okay, so now try and pull some cord. Because I don't want to have to take this tank out because it is a challenge to get back in. Okay, so we're here on the other side. I'm going to try and see if I can't get a little bit more slack on this cord fuel line. And I can't. So, hmm. Let me come back to you. All right, well, uh, still working on some things. Um, we've got uh, the gas tank door off, which allowed us to take the filler neck out of the vehicle. Uh, and we were able to get the uh, gas neck into the grommet there 
which has been giving us uh, which has been giving us a great amount of uh, consternation and issues. However, uh, we are going to have to figure out how to get it in there while because we can't take this metal piece off. So we're gonna have to figure out how to get that in the that in there while also through there so we've got uh we've got some things to figure out um continues to be uh very rusty um under there and uh that's fine all right yeah all right so kind of right now just trying to like twist this pipe and like just get it to to fit in a little bit better and be okay with that but like it's a it's a tight fit like I don't know why um, it's quite so uh, like it's not even like turning uh, I did put oil on it uh, to try and help lubricate it um, but it's like it really doesn't want to move once it's in there and that is going to be a problem in trying to get it on so let's just kind of keep keep doing this and hopefully it'll start loosening up that rubber grommet and uh, will be easier to go in when we finally try and put it in uh. Well, bad news, uh, this popped out, um, and it just, like, I don't know, like, it's not, I ordered the grommet, uh, little rubber part that it said for me to order, but it just, like, it's really just ridiculously, like, tight, like, I, this isn't a high pressure line, it's just holding gas that flows in. I don't know if I'm just doing this wrong or what, but this has quickly become the most difficult and frustrating part of this entire process so far. Um, yeah, I just can't, like, 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 why? Why you gotta be like that? I don't know. <sighs> Okay, um, so update. Uh, we took off the rubber piece that goes in there. Uh, so hopefully we'll be able to get that into the neck. We are also going to start using some uh, uh, Dawn uh, to provide lubrication for it. Uh, we're going to replace the old broken uh, uh, clamps with these new ones. I got bit by an ant. And uh, we're going to use this to replace the seal on the filler neck here. So, uh, yeah, we'll let you know how that goes, hopefully soon. Uh, this has been a very complicated process. Uh, so, oh, there's another rubber thing that's broken. Good. Uh, so if you uh, are replacing your gas tank, keep that in mind. Dad's been working on uh, uh, cleaning up the uh, the vinyl top, and he's been doing a good job with that. Uh, it's still got a long way to go. There's some uh, places it'll need repair. Or oh, that spider. Don't touch him. Hello. Um, so we're going to keep trying to juice this up and hopefully bring it back as much as possible, but I don't know how we can repair like all of these little guys. So we may have to figure out how to do a new vinyl top. We've been using uh, VLR, vinyl leather rubber, cleans, conditions, and protects, penetrates for deep renewal. Um, so, I mean, it feels cleaner. Alright, so this hose, again this is one of our 50-50 chance hoses, 
here's one of the new clamp things should just kind of go in here and just push it there and uh, oh MG I fixed something maybe yeah that feels like it's on there I'm back here anyway and I've uh, had to drop the tank I thought I might as well show you all right this is, these are the two lines uh, this one is on the driver's side because uh, I'm under the trunk right now um, so this one I believe goes to uh, the line over there and then this one is running that way to the passenger side I think <clears throat> see if we can't get these in <sighs> ah it's probably not how that's supposed to go uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. okay okay nope nope stay on there stay straight hmm We got them both on. Well, after much effort, we got the tank in and the filler neck hose in. So we're doing good. Uh, just need to bolt that back up in there. Um, but yeah, we're uh, we're making progress. Uh, yeah. What do you think, Dad? You did a great, great, great <laughs> job. What is this? Is this a gas tank that's installed in this car? What? All right, Dad, you want to do the honorary pour? See if anything leaks out. All right, here we go. First time putting gas in this tank. I hear it. I hear it going in. I don't see any leaks, which uh, is good because uh, it's a brand new tank. Yeah, but where we uh, <laughs> turn the key? Uh, moral to you all, if you're uh, putting a fuel tank neck into your fuel tank, Dawn is a good choice. I'm going to try and energize this now and see if there's any if there's any leaks or anything. Oh, yeah, we heard some squirting. We got squirting. Okay, well, we got some some serious leakage. Where's that one coming from? It can't. It's this one. It sprayed all the way this way. It sprayed back all it's that coming way. Coming down the. Coming down oh, the a little little, uh, little aqueduct for the gas. And it sprayed all over the exhaust. All right, so what we have here is a gas leak coming. Not from the fuel tank this time, but from one of the fuel lines. Uh, you got the little, little thing? What oh. little thing? 
The flashlight? I do not. You have so, a lighter? Okay, so we got the tank in and it's holding gas, so that's good. We've noticed a break in the line from the gas tank to the front. Um, so we're trying to fix that. It's a significant break, so that may be why the fuel injectors aren't getting any fuel, which, uh, you know, might actually be the best case scenario. We're coming up here to be uh, end of light today, so this uh, might not get done with the, the fuel portion today, which, uh, you know, uh, it, was, uh, it was a goal, but, uh, you know, we got a lot of stuff done, so I'm not unhappy with that work. But it's, uh, boy, that tank was a beast, let me tell you. Whew, duh. Um, so yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna see how much more we can get done uh, with the light we have left, so yeah, hopefully. Hopefully we can get it figured out. I've never done a fuel line before, so this is new. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that this is the source of the gasoline leak. Um, since the line is really rusted here, um, I took out the little plastic clamp thing but the line is not wanting to uh, to come out of the holder here, so I've got to figure a way out to make that happen. So far I've been using needle nose pliers and a uh, pipe wrench, but I haven't been able to pull it out yet, so I think it's just so rusted in place, and I think this is the last step to to getting the fuel up front, so I really want to make that happen. Okay. Uh, I don't know what this thing is. I'm thinking this is the fuel filter. It was right in line after where the brake was. Uh, so I disconnected it. A little bit of fuel leaked out, not too terrible much. Um, so what if I ran a line from that to my good line and just bypass that whole place entirely is that something I can do okay now I know this isn't a permanent solution but I'm thinking maybe I can do this just to kind of hear it run see if it works I don't know. All right, that's a that's a negative Ghost Rider. That did not work, but will it work with a clamp? Okay. Um, is it a dumb idea if it works? Maybe a dumb idea. Okay. I have a clamp now on what I believe is the fuel filter. And hopefully that will stay. Great. Okay, not seeing any under the car. So, okay. that's, a win. that's a win. That's a win. We don't have any gas to put down the tank, do we? Yeah, there's a bottle right there. Oh. All right. That's way too much. Way, way too much. All right, well, let's see what happens. I'm gonna just stand back here then. Oh. Stop! Stop!
Okay, try it again. <laughs> All right, stop. Way too much. Alright. It'll be fine. Yep. Alright, I don't see the injectors firing. Alright, so we don't have any fuel leaks from the tank uh, at all. And I don't see any fuel leaking out of the car. So I'm assuming that it's making it up here. I'm not seeing it come out of the throttle body injectors. It is leaking out of this thing. I don't know what this thing is, but it is leaking out of that. Um, and I'm not really sure where to go from here, guys. Huh. Since we're losing daylight, this this may be it for this week. Um, so Dad and I will try and figure out what this is, because I think we got the fuel coming up here. Uh, so I'm not seeing it leak out anywhere else. Um, could be clogged uh, throttle body injectors. Could be a clogged line somewhere. Though well, it's leaking, so I'm thinking it's coming out. Um, if you know, please put it down in the comments and tell me, because uh, I would appreciate that, because I'm kind of kind of at a loss for the moment. But we did good work this week, uh, good use of my weekend. I was happy with it. I uh, got to work with Dad, so I was happy for that too. Um, we had a good time despite uh, <laughs> the severe hardships we faced at some points. I didn't quite get done everything. I wanted to get done uh, this weekend but that's okay we got the new fuel tank in which is great um, I cobbled together some lines which uh, hopefully will hold for a little bit um, so that's good as well um, and we've hopefully moved fuel up to the front so we can try and figure out what's happening there I don't really know uh, where to go from there but We'll hopefully be able to figure something out next week um, or for the next video rather um, we're going to be moving to the front of the car hopefully and not have to be under the car anymore which would be just I can't tell you it'd just be so wonderful um, but uh, yeah try and figure out the stuff under the hood um, and why it's not starting like it'll crank but it won't start because you need three things to make an engine run you need a dull weak spark which we have compression um, which it sounds like we have when the engine turns over and fuel which we should be having but we're not so we've got to figure that portion out um, yeah so if you guys uh, have any questions or comments please feel free to leave them down below if you like the video please leave a like um, and thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it.